Hey guys, I've titled this lesson that we're having today, Labors for Horizontal Immunity, Making Manifest Vertical Detachment the Mark of the Beast. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 14, we've been discussing, and I'm going to go ahead and read that passage. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them, that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live verse 15 and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed Okay, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The beast appears, and it looks like a lamb, but it speaks the words of Satan. 2 Timothy 3.13, But evil men and shadusha shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And Romans chapter 3, verse 13. Their throat is, is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. And the poison of aphs is under their lips. And finally, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9 and 12. Revelation chapter 13.12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwelt therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Here we have the purpose of the beast is to solicit the worship of death to all flesh upon earth, thereby removing all of its captives' names from the book of life. Revelation chapter 13, verse 4 and 8. Revelation chapter 13... 13 verse 13 and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men with the first line of revelation chapter 13 14 and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast revelation 13 13 with the first line of revelation chapter 13 verse 14 is the commission to the image to the beast as understood by the greek word planeho that appears in 2 timothy chapter 3 verse 13 but evil men and seducers seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived so this deceiving is the greek word planeho that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verses 14, in the first line of verse 14, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. It's the same word. So, and this passage in Revelation chapter verses 13, 13, with the first line of verse 14, depicts the baptism and the anointing of the image to the beast with the spirit of Antichrist to deceive the entire world, the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So here we have the baptism and the anointing of the image of the beast with the spirit of Antichrist to deceive the entire world as the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan. Romans chapter 3 verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit and the poison of asps is under their lips. We know that Romans 3 13 explicates the complete spiritual transfer of satanic captivity from the image to the beast to the creature. Their throat is an open sepulcher. That's the invitation to serve hell and death. Luke chapter 11 verse 44. With their tongues, they have used deceit. Here the image of the beast appears as the minister of Satan. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no more for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. It means he's a minister of the gospel. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. So the minister of Satan appears here, and I personally believe this is the image of the beast as manifest in the constitution of satanic captivity, Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17, and the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. So 
with their tongues, Romans 3.13, the, the second line of this, with their tongues they have used deceit. This, we're explicating this, the complete spiritual transfer of satanic captivity from the image of the beast to the creature. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. And with this line here, the image of the beast appears as the minister of Satan. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist as poison disguised as lemonade. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Remember, Satan doesn't, people won't drink poison unless it's disguised as lemonade. And that's what false apostate Christianity that seats all lost souls in the kingdom of hell is all about. It's about fooling people with a fake, a facsimile, while the souls that contain therein are dead and they're operational in satanic power and they're manifesting Satan's presence as their blood is contaminated with the spirit of Antichrist and their bodies are arrayed with the demons of hell, Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45. So let's get back to this. The, the Romans 3, 13, their throat is open sepulcher, but their tongues they have used deceit. And finally, the poison of apps is under their lips. Here appears the transfer of the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10, received contaminating the blood of the captive and the creature that the image of the beast is attempting to transfer satanic captivity to. And it is perfected in works by the by the creature's words and works, which are pretty much one and the same because your your words dictate your reality. So and that's depicted in Revelation 17, 6, the fullness of that. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. That's the manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist indwelling all the captives that receive the mark of the beast and take their final seats in the kingdom of hell. So Romans 3, 13 is horrible. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing, it's an awesome and horrifying passage of scripture that God has given to us to warn us about satanic captivity and the minister of Satan. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit, and the poison of ass is under their lips. When you're talking to them, you're being spiritually, you're being bitten by a king cobra. That's what's taking place. But the Bible also says in Revelation 17:5. Upon her forehead was named written Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations. They don't know. You don't know you're transforming. You know your labors are illicit. And they go against uh, uh, the, the laws of God, their sin. They go against the laws of the land, their crime. You know, and they, they're, they're definitely morally bankrupt. We know that. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. So... This is just an amazing, it's an amazing passage of scripture and it depicts the, the, the contamination of the blood and the captivity in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 as it's transferred from the image of the beast to the creature and the creature becomes operational in satanic power. So it's just it's an it's an amazing Romans three thirteen is an amazing passage of scripture and that's why God uses the and, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which He had power to do in the sight of the beast. This is the manifest uh, commission of Satan to the image of the beast as the image of the beast is summoning Satan to a, excuse me the, excuse me Satan is summoning the image of the beast to appear. This is his commission and his power that he's given to pour out the spirit of Antichrist in deception. And it's all a lie. It's all poison disguised as lemonade. Every single word the image of the beast speaks to the creature. And we know that when the image of the beast today goes goes into, into the world and talks to people in a, in a direct capacity, every single person that it's talking to, it's telling them it's going to get them more money. 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they err from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. And coupled with 1 John 2.15-18, through love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all those in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the world, but the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, this is the last time, as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it, is, that it is the last time. We know money, the love of money covers, as the root of all evil, covers the lust of flesh and lust eyes and the pride of life. 
It can, it can bring fleshly gratification. It can bring material things and it can, it can bring the glory of the world as the people of the world look to you and in your own glory. So the love of money covers all that. And that's why the image of the beast today, when it goes and it's seeking captives, it's not telling people that it's there to poison their blood with the spirit of antichrist and render them dead souls in illicit works and captive on pain of death to its own sexual and monetary desires as depicted in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. And I saw women set upon a scarlet color beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. It doesn't tell people that it's it's telling people that it's 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 giving them something better. It's giving them a better quality of life. It's not telling people that the words that it's speaking are satanic. It's anointed by Satan to capture the world with the spirit of Antichrist, contaminating their blood with the spirit of Antichrist. And eventually it will, on pain of death, force the creature into sexual and monetary control as the motive for the image of the beast, selling its soul to Satan and attempting to captivate and satanically alter the United States Constitution, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, which we know is the constitution of, of Satan. It's the government of Satan in its operational capacity. It's not telling people that it's going to eventually, it's going to turn on them as a king cobra turns on it, the snake master. Because when you're talking to him, you're, you're getting bit by a snake spiritually. Because he's pouring the spirit of Antichrist into your blood. He's attempting to capture you into illicit works so he can fulfill his own, as revealed by Revelation 17, 3 and 4, his own sexual and monetary desires as he labors to reap a harvest in his illicit works on pain of death. Because he, this is a harvest he cannot reap in the presence of God, Revelation 3, 20. In democratic society, this is a, this is, he can't reap a harvest of the glory of the world. He has to come to steal it. Uh, uh, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in to him and sup with him and he with me. And Mark 4.26-29, through 29, The kingdom of heaven is as if a man should cast seed in the ground. Luke 8.11, The seed is the word of God. He can, in the presence of God, make as much money as he feels that he deserves and have as many sexual partners as he feels that he deserves. So he's coming in illicit works. He's soliciting the, the murder of the children of God and the children of man to fulfill his own sexual desires and to render the creatures in service unto him on pain of death and in a, in a monetary capacity. And so he's coming to steal. He's coming to steal money and he's coming to captivate creatures and render their souls dead service without discretion. That's what the mark of the beast is. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 and 12. And then shall many be offended, shall betray one another and hate one another because, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So he wants to kill souls. He, he's the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan and he's, he's commissioned to deceive the world, to poison his captives that he's speaking to in a direct capacity with the spirit of Antichrist and, it, and, 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 and and in a passive capacity, having the people that, that he captures in service to pour out the spirit of Antichrist upon the world to reap a harvest of death just indiscriminately by planting seeds, by planting weeds amongst the wheat, with amongst the wheat and the tares. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 and 36 to 43 is the, pa is the passive manifestation of the image of the beast attempting to reap a harvest of death without getting a face-to-face -face contact and pouring out his own his glory and he's doing it by his own glory because he's going now to all the children of god and the children of man telling them that he has he has all the monies of the world just as satan did to christ when it was all a lie he has he controls all the kingdoms of the world he controls all the money of the world and he can render people into sexual captivity and this is just exactly in luke chapter 4 and the first, you know, I think 1 through 13, this is what Satan did to Christ. And this is exactly what the image of the beast has been anointed to do to our children here in the United States of America to render them captive so that they will serve him and and hurt masses of other people so he can labor to, to eventually come to power and fulfill his sexual and monetary lusts in illicit works and on pain of death and reap a harvest that he couldn't reap 
unless he's threatening to kill people. Okay, and Revelation 13, 15, 13, 15 makes absolutely crystal clear that he's going to kill people that will not render him sexual and monetary service, as depicted in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, the motive why he sold his soul to Satan. Okay, so Romans 3, 13 is horrible. It's just amazing, but it's it's how the image to the beast is, I mean, when you, like I said, I can't say it enough. When you talk to him, you're being bitten by a rattlesnake. You're being bitten by a sidewinder spiritually because he's pouring the spirit of Antichrist in your blood. He's telling you that he has power that he doesn't have. He's attempting to, to claim glory that he doesn't have. And he's attempting only to fill his own sexual and monetary desires on your pain of your death. And he will, he will eventually, the Bible makes it very clear in the constitution and the government of Satan, he will kill you for his sexual and monetary pleasure if you don't render obedience to him in the final moments of earth's history when the mark of the beast falls on all flesh. And that's why he's killing souls. He's killing souls because he can't re he has to reap this harvest of souls that are dead that will serve him without the love of God in their hearts. He is the, he is the high priest. When you talk to the image of the beast, you're talking directly to Satan. Revelation chapter 17 verse 17. You're talking directly to Satan when you're talking to him. So let's keep going. Revelation 13, 14, the first line, we are given the mechanism and instrument by which the image of the beast is given to deceive the entire world as miracles. The Greek word, semion, a sign or token, especially ceremony, ceremonially or supernaturally. Also appearing in Revelation 13, 13 as a wonder, also appearing in Revelation chapter 16, 14. So this is what he's doing, Revelation 16, 14. This, is, this expands upon the commission of the image of the beast to deceive the world and perform miracles, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist. It, it expands upon the great commission that's given to the image of the beast, the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan. The seal of Satan is in Revelation, is in the constitution of Satan, Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. But Revelation 16, 14 expands upon his ministry and what he's what he is he's commissioned to do by Satan as he was summoned by Satan in Revelation chapter 13 verses 13 and 14 for these are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth under the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty that makes it absolutely crystal clear that's the the commission of the image of the beast in very simple terms to go the to, to the entire world to kings to all that are in authority and to the, even even the populations of the world pouring out the spirit of Antichrist in a, in a direct and a passive manifestation to impose the mark of the beast in their souls. That's, what, that's the only purpose he has on this world. He's claiming the glory of the world and the power of sexual and monetary control all, over all flesh by the fact that he knows he can commit murders and render the creature and subject to captivity. He's already claiming it now. And he's claiming it uh, pur purportedly. He's claiming it. He's claiming power purportedly over the entire world because he knows he can kill people and and render them in service unto him if he can fool if he can create a union of civil and ecclesiastical power that appears in as the beast and the harlot in Revelation chapter 17 verse 3 and 4, and the image of the beast and the religious tax that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 through 17. He knows that he has to he has to appear as the minister of Satan, Revelation chapter, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, he has to appear as a little angel while he is soliciting ch the murder of God's children, the ch murder of the children of man. He has to uh, to appear as an angel of light, right? He has to he has to be he has to be cloaked in a fraudulent manifestation of righteousness so he can fulfill his own desires within the United States population and democratic union and have the civil the state of Texas protect him and the 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 fraudulent body of Christ that whose souls he's killed by 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 promoting a religious tax and that was the purpose. He's doing it to everybody though. Everywhere he goes, he's telling him he's going to get more money. That's the one, the first thing that comes out of his mouth. Every single person he talks to, he's telling him he's going to get him more money. And it's all a lie. Because as this democracy goes further and further into satanic captivity, 
and the, once the, the image of the beast gets the full manifestation of its numbers and its power upon earth, Revelation chapter 13, 15 through 17, they, he's going to, it's, it's, he's bankrupt. He's spiritually bankrupt. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. He doesn't, there's judgments going to fall because he's going to abuse the children of God and the children of man. And everything that he says is a lie. It's all a lie so he can get the people in this country and in, in the civil and ecclesiastical powers to declare he's righteous and to prevent the population from finding out that he's, 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 he's solicited child murders for sexual control and fulfillment of his own desires. And he's stealing money from the population. Because he can't do this. As the United States Constitution stands today, he can't be the glory of the world working in the job that he's working at. He has to solicit the murder of God's children and the murder of the children of man to fulfill his, his satanic lust. John chapter 8, verse 44. So, Revelation chapter 13, 15. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause it as many would, as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The corporeal form of the image of the beast appearing here, we have the image of the beast, the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, speaking the words of the beast and soliciting the worship of death to the entire world. John chapter 8, verse 44. He's killing souls. When you talk to this... To the, to the high priest of Satan, he's poisoning your soul with the spirit of Antichrist, and he's killing your soul with the intention of incorporating the Constitution and the government of Satan into the United States Constitution. He's, he's killing souls is what he's doing to render them captives to his own sexual and monetary desires. So... So this here we have the beast... And the plurality of its inward parts is the singular manifestation of Satan's image. And his image and the plurality of its occupation and works is the manifest presence of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. The total evacuation of the Spirit of Grace, the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell. They're all dead souls. They, they all have them. That's the mark of the beast. And that's what the mark of the beast is designed to do. It's, it's designed so the reapers, which are the angels that appear in the parable of the net, Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 through 50, can discern who has the seal of God and who's going to stay here on earth until the, the millennial judgment is over. Revelation 20, verses 1 through 6. It's, it's not, it, it, the only way it can be discerned by a natural man is by the manifestation of Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. It's a religious tax. I believe it's a religious tax. And it's the civil authority uh, killing people to fulfill its own sexual and monetary desires in its own glory. As it's being protected by the state and fraudulent, the fraudulent body, the church of Satan. The fraudulent, and that's why he raised it up. The, the image of the beast raised up the church of Satan. The Bible makes absolutely crystal clear. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. He caused the mark of the beast. He raised up the church of Satan, and the false apostate Christianity is subject unto him. Because the Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, the parable of the salt of the earth, he, this is how he views his captives. Good for nothing. And they're going to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. Luke chapter 11, verse 44. Because God will not be mocked. He doesn't like anybody. If you won't render him sexual and monetary service, I mean, still anybody that does, he'll get. I mean, he's Satanist. He's a Satanist, and he's going to go satanically insane, as as manifest in Proverbs chapter four, verses fourteen through nineteen. He's it's, he's trying to turn the United States Constitution into a facsimile of a drug cartel or an organized crime family, and at, when he does that. He's going to know he's going to have to continue killing human beings and capturing people in service to the spirit of Antichrist to maintain his power. And that's he's so he's going to go satanically insane. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 through 19 depicts the spiritual insanity and the satanic captivity as the image to the beast goes satanically insane while it's fulfilling its own lusts and murdering the creature. To maintain its its complacency, so 
Being so, seven, Revelation 17 1 through 6 is the final occupation of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, the abode of the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 16, verses 14 through 16. Let me go ahead and, and read that. Revelation chapter 16, verses 14 through 16. For they are spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Lest he walk naked and they see a shame. And, they, and he gathered them together in a, into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. This is where the, the image to the beast gathered. It did the gathering for the Antichrist. The image, the Antichrist, the Antichrist did its work as the spirit of Antichrist and had people labor in the lie that was satanic glory that was the image of the beast that appeared in front of them in civil power telling them to worship death and to pour out the spirit of antichrist in the united states of america upon the population okay so the the gatherer here is is the image of the beast as it pours out the spirit of antichrist so during the seven last plagues that fall on all flesh with the mark of the beast holy father god interjects this warning with more information about the image of the beast and its great commission to kill the souls of all flesh. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 8, stating they are spiritual devils. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. Okay, and once once the seven last plagues fall, though, they've already these people. This is this is this is the minister of Satan. It's done. They they have the mark of the beast. So the mark of the, the the seven last plagues fall on all flesh, and the minister of Satan has actually here done its work. It's done its work, and and it's imposed the mark of the beast, the seal of Satan, within all flesh. That everybody that it was capable, every soul that it was capable of doing so. And Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 and 2, And I saw another I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and it has become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So this is the habitation. This occurs during the seven last plagues. Spiritually, this is the array of all the demons of hell upon the flesh of all lost souls as they are seated in in uh, their grad a graduating scale in the kingdom of hell as as depicted in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. So this uh, this is the, their spiritual captivity during the seven last plagues what appears here in Revelation chapter 18 1 and 2. And this is actually this one angel coming down from heaven with the glory of God enlightens the entire world and it sees every single demon of hell arrayed upon the flesh of every single human being that receives the mark of the beast and has taken their seat in Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 6. So they go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Revelation chapter 20 verse 7 through 9 of course depicts that the finality, the uh, uh, the 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 purpose of gathering together is to stand in the, the great white throne judgment. So the image of the beast is speaking the words of the beast, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist to baptize and anoint all flesh as a child of Satan. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 and 10, Romans 3, 13. And Revelation 14 says, And the third angel followed him, saying with loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead and his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. This is the process. This is the creature that is being being heralded in a direct capacity, standing face to face with the image of the beast, as the image of the beast transfers the spirit of Antichrist to the the to the creature as the pouring out of the spirit of Antichrist contaminating its blood to render it in service unto its own spiritual death to pour out the spirit of Antichrist on the masses in a passive manifestation as it is standing face to face and receiving the pouring out and the, the poison of ass, the spirit of Antichrist in a face to face uh, confrontation with the image to the beast. So. 
Thereby, the image of the beast claims, thereby, the image of the beast claims a vertical immunity before the face of Holy Father God. Psalm chapter 51, verse 1 through 4, Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, Romans chapter 7, verse 12 through 14, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, and Romans chapter 6, 23, are made manifest by its labors for horizontal immunity before the kings of the earth. Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. This is actually a change of the United States Constitution, a corruption of the United States Constitution, where the civil powers are protecting the image of the beast and allowing it to to commit murders for to fulfill its own sexual and monetary gratification and to impose a religious tax so the false apostate christianity will claim that it's righteous while it's claim while it is is manifesting its illicit works within the population of course 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 through 4 depicts this glory of the world as as the image of the beast is purportedly claiming it now it's already claiming it has it's captivated it's captivated uh, the the federal government the federal reserve and false apostate christianity and it's claiming this now purportedly by the fact that it knows that all it has to do is get these powers to allow it to commit murders out here summarily execute people out here on the street and then it can fulfill its own sexual and monetary desires and it can incorporate the glory of the world into its own image and thereby taking all the glory of the world into satanic power which is what is depicted in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and this passage points out that the reason they stole the glory of the world and they rendered the creature into into service to satanic power was for their king antichrist that's who ultimately has all the power and he's just as cruel to them i mean matthew chapter 5 13 says that they're going to do terrible things to the body of christ and even false the people that are renting them service and false apostate christianity but i guarantee you <laughs> we know that satan doesn't like anybody he doesn't like any flesh and he doesn't want anybody out there saying hey Satan's doing this. We know Satan's alive. He's he's here, and his demons are all around us, and they're they're manifesting their ministry to to kill the souls of human beings to impose the mark of the beast. He don't like that. He doesn't like anybody. Satan doesn't like that, you know, and he doesn't want anybody, and not especially not the image of the beast, bringing any attention to the fact that he's going to appear as the antichrist before the end of the world. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. So, these works are the natural manifestation of the spiritual inhabitation, the spirit of Antichrist, and the soul of man, the presence and purpose of the mark of the beast. Re Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 14. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Romans chapter 3, verse 19 and 20 and 23. And of course, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. Remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 15. Thank you.